What's actually kind of funny about this episode is that it's a turn, essentially, on what Dean got back at the end of Season 5 compared to what Sam got at the end of Season 7. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guys. Hey guys, this is my review for Episode 3 of Supernatural Season 8, and this is the episode where they find out that this super amazing football player was actually uh, basically worshipping to a Mayan god for the last thousand years, been a super duper sports guy over the years, and his organs have got transplanted into different people, and now they are all kind of killing in the name of Kagao, the god, and it actually turns into a kind of a cool little mystery. I like this episode because it takes a lot of elements that we've seen in other episodes of Supernatural and it tries to give it a creative edge. For instance, the organ thing, that was done back in season six, I think. Uh, I just remember that also leading to one of the worst episodes in Supernatural history for me, the, the mannequin one. See it done better in this one was a comforting thing. I like the story of the mystery that unravels, but I also like the dynamic between Sam and Dean. There is a conflict of interest between the two. Obviously, Dean is happy to be hunting again, and this plies into the fact that this is technically is a Monster of the Week episode, but it revolves around the dynamics of where the brothers are at in this time in the show where Sam technically speaking went off and did what he wanted to do which was go and live his life where Dean had gotten that same chance but didn't want to and it's that parallel between the two of what they actually want and the fact that Dean gives Sam crap about it is a little bit hypocritical considering Dean had been in that exact situation but took it for granted and didn't want it Sam on the other hand does to see how these two are fighting against each other's Dean is trying to convince his brother, being a little bit gaslighty, if anything. I'm done. I mean that. No, you don't. I mean, I got to see what that felt like. I want that. I had that. I think that's just how you feel right now. You have a poison in your mind, and the fact that you can't see it makes me so sad. That will definitely play into how the season comes to an end. Just seeing these little tidbits, these little moments between the two brothers is making me think about that finale more. All that subtle buildup, that character dramatization between the two, I'm appreciative for that. Also, we noticed that Castiel is not talked about whatsoever in this episode, so Carver has already done more than Dab could do in terms of a or wasn't even a purgatory episode there was a little bit of a tidbit about Sam's previous life at the end of the episode and if anything the horror and the gore in this episode is actually pretty decent especially with the dude who takes the the metal pike and rips his eyeball out or all the guts and the hearts being ripped out pretty good but it did make me miss the old days of how they used to shoot Supernatural there's been someone who's been commenting apologies I can't remember exactly who right now but you've made the comment about the switch to HD and how it really took away the horror element and I could definitely see it in this episode this one in particular a lot of this I feel would have been more shadow based but because it was in HD there's a little bit more light to it they try, like, especially the girl, the stripper who rips out the heart. That was an okay setup, but I feel if we had shot on film, been a little bit more uh, indulgent with the shadows, I feel that scene would have had more horror to it. Otherwise, it's just kind of like, oh, wow, there's his heart in her hand. I get now seeing that this is a different show, especially when it hits Sam in his past with the lady that's that soap opera filter bullshit that would basically become what the show would use especially in its latter seasons so i'm already kind of cringing every time i see that filter on the screen the episode does kind of come to a somewhat mid end where they go to the strip club which i'm pretty sure is the penthouse in vancouver and they kind of have a fight with the people who have been ripping out organs i love how runner dude came back you guys are stronger than you look <laughs> comes with the package plus i work out a lot sure the ending is kind of uh but you can tell they tried to try and make this a more intuitive episode than it could have been and again the background about sam and dean while not anywhere near as much of in depth as say season one two three four five it's still trying and when you're at season fucking eight and you're still able to find little means of having realistic drama between the brothers hey i'll give it to him because Eventually, we 
would lose all sense of actual legitimacy as the show would go on. So in the end, I think I'm going to give this episode a 4 out of 7. I think it's an okay episode. I remember it more now for the brothers interaction than anything else like the monster thing is fun but i think it just kind of comes to a boo ending again credit to the writer of this episode the writers whichever they tried so anyways guys that's my review but let's see what you guys had to say about this episode harding is directed by jensen ackles and a fun fact the police detective in the episode is his biological father alan ackles <laughs> actually that kind of makes sense at first, I didn't think much of the episode because I was never engaged with watching sports, but I love watching, playing sports. But after watching this episode in retrospective, you get to see and understand Sam's heartache and going back to a normal life. While Dean has flashbacks of Purgatory being murky and dark, it makes sense from a visual aspect that Sam's all bright and full of color and dreamy, uh, and that looked dreamy as if too good to be true. The all-star athlete Brick also represents Sam and Dean's lives when they took on too many personas to investigate the supernatural. Although it's not the best episode of the season, I don't think it's given enough credit for what it's trying to achieve. I guess there is some, like, aspects to it. Um, I, th I didn't mind the flashbacks as much as I thought I would. I find this episode and many others as fillers with flashbacks so the writers can figure out what they're doing. Mid-season, they got the plot, but it took too long to get there. And it does, it does take a bit, it does take a bit. Ah, the Carpenter Era. Easily my least favorite of the show. I hate season nine and 10 and it's dreadfully boring, but I do admit I like season eight. The first two episodes are pretty great. Excited to watch the rest of the reviews. I mean, that's kind of wow, because like I, I don't like the Dab Era at all, but I, I will admit I am kind of bored watching the Carver Era so far. But 11 is fantastic for me. There are only two things I remember from a heartache. Sam's gro gorgeous flowing hair and Jensen Ackles' dad getting a cameo. It's a pretty forgettable episode. This season doesn't really start to pick up until at least episode 8. And that's when the shit really hits the fan. Yeah, no, that's true. Because it's... It does try. Honestly, I find episodes like Heartache to be the main problem with season 8 instead of Amelia and her story with Sam. This boring 40 minute waste of time has little to do with the main plot in the season. As plot heavy as season 8, it really sticks out like a sore thumb. The story is boring, acting particularly from, uh, not gonna try and pronounce that, who does a weird accent, is terrible, and the direction by Jensen uh, nonetheless is really weak. This season is all, has some of the best cinematography in the show, so it's baffling to me how this episode looks like it's filled, <laughs> filtered in dog poo or piss. It is fitting that the buckleaming uh, wrote this. However, which whenever actual talent is not available, those two will come in to challenge Andrew Dad for the worst writers in the show award. Apparently they were the only ones that stayed after Jeremy left. Oh. I mean... I didn't mind some of the shots, but yeah, some could have been there. But, uh, uh, yeah, what was it? I, I didn't even realize it was these two. All right, guys, that's it for me on this one. Thank you guys for your comments. And the next episode, number four, is Bitten. This is the found footage episode, if I'm correct. So leave me your guys' thoughts about that episode in, in the comments below, and I'll read, it all, read those off in the next review. Hope you guys are enjoying so far. That's three down, 20 more to go. Finish this by what, March or April of next year, maybe? Anyways, guys, that's all for me. See you guys next time.